Hi, welcome. This is Clement the Lector. In this video I will talk a bit about a special kind of AC LED driver, the so-called linear LED driver. The other day at the waste dump I found this 30 watt LED spot. And as it looked pretty nice, good condition, and as I could use a good spot, uh, I decided to take it home and try it out. But of course it uh, did not work, um, as you can expect from something that you find at the waste dump. So I took it apart to see what it looked like on the inside and to see if I could repair it. And doing so I noticed that some LEDs had black spots on them, uh, which indicated damage. So maybe all I had to do was replace these LEDs and uh, then the spot would work again. However, the electronics looked a bit strange to me. I had expected uh, some sort of uh, constant current uh, LED driver with all the LEDs connected in series. But instead I saw some sort of a three channel system with uh, three big transistors and three uh, small transistors uh, driven by an uh, IC. There are no transformers and inductors on the board that you normally find in uh, switch mode power supplies. And the LEDs were not connected simply in series but in a more complicated way. Because of this I decided to reverse engineer the board and draw the schematics. What I ended up with was the schematic of a circuit that I'd never seen before. The power supply is just a rectified mains without filtering, so technically it's a DC, but not constant as it is a rectified sine wave. I quickly found the datasheet for the transistors online, but I could not find anything about the IC uh, L1050. Because the spot is powered directly from the mains, I searched for a high voltage AC uh, LED drivers and little by little I started homing in on a special kind of driver that is called the uh, direct uh, AC driver or a linear LED driver or even sequential linear LED driver. The LEDs of the direct uh, AC driver are all connected in series, but certain nodes of the chain are connected to a transistor that can switch to ground and the length of the chain is therefore variable. Actually, the transistors do not simply switch to ground, but control the current through the LED chain. The idea of the circuit is that the number of LEDs being driven depends on the level of the supply voltage, which is, as you will remember, a rectified sine wave. Because there are several current paths, IC1 can adjust the current through the LED string so that it follows the input voltage, making the circuit look more or less like a resistive load. The cosine phi or power factor of this driver is therefore much closer to one than that of a typical switch mode power supply based LED driver. After studying a few data sheets of linear LED drivers, I could analyze the circuit in more detail. R5 and R6 provide current sensing for IC1. R1, R2 and R4 form a voltage divider that allow IC1 to monitor variations of the input voltage and adapt the drive current accordingly. This helps stabilizing the spot's light intensity. In my spot, IC1 pins 4 and 7 connect to a peer motion detector sensor. Maybe it allows for dimming too. A bit mysterious remains the circuit around Q7, ZD1 and Q6. Q6 seems to bypass Q4 and the part of the LED string. However, when the current through R12 and R13 becomes high enough, Q7 starts to conduct and switches off Q6. The string is now a bit longer and Q4 can be used, and this clearly has an influence on the light intensity. Maybe this is uh, some sort of overvoltage protection? Ok, so now that I understood the circuit, I decided to try to repair the board. Uh, the LEDs on the board are 9 volt 100 milliamp types with uh, 3 LEDs inside, and I did not have these LEDs in stock. So I went online uh, to look for them and I found them uh, quickly, but what I also found were replacement boards for LED spots. And actually you can find these boards in all sorts of power levels and uh, after some searching I found a 30 watt uh, replacement board that had a similar LED surface as uh, the original board. So I ordered one of those instead of LEDs. Mounting the new LED board in place of the old one uh, turned out to be very easy as all I had to do was drill uh, for mounting holes. The peer motion sensor is not compatible with the new board, but since I did not have a use for it anyway, I just uh, left it out. Connecting the spot with the new LED board to the main showed that it worked fine again. So that was cool, I got myself a 30 watt LED spot for 2 euros 50, and of course uh, some time, but I also learned a lot from it and I could make this video about it. I hope you found it interesting and uh, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.